Okay, so there's a whole lot to do when you ride a motorcycle. You've got to take off your gloves, you've got to take off your glasses, you've got to take off your helmet, all of which you've got to put on uh, prior to uh, riding a motorcycle. And I've thought a lot about that today. I've thought a lot about risk today because I'm here in beautiful Torrance at the UCLA Harbor Medical Center at the St. John's Cardiovascular Center. Um, speaking of risk, you know, you can... You can pretty much try to safeguard yourself from dying on a motorcycle, but if you grew up a product of the 60s and 70s and 80s, well, nowadays we have to realize that maybe some of the foods our parents were feeding us back then weren't exactly good for us. So we have to, much like taking this into the shop, go into the shop ourselves and see what's going on under the hood. There's a, a new test. It's not invasive. I don't have to have any balloons or things put in my heart that's going to take a look at my heart and see what's going on inside of it as well as the rest of my body. We're going to watch that process. We're going to talk to one of the doctors who actually is leading the way in this technology and we're gonna see <laughs> if I have a heart or if I do if it's 20 sizes too small or what's going to happen so let's go inside and start the imaging I'm more than a little scared all kidding aside I know that we're doing this as part of a feature and I know that this is something that we all need to do but you know you always hear about people going into the doctors for a heart test and then like the next day uh, they're you know <laughs> on the table. So I'm sort of afraid that after the scan happened, he's going to walk in and say, honey, we've already put you on the transplant list. Your heart, your heart is just terrible. And because, you know, I'm heavier now than I have been in a long time, uh, I haven't been eating the best, uh, although my cholesterol is good and I do try. So we'll see what happens. But like everyone else out there, when they're going to take a look at something as important as your heart, it's a little scary. I've, and Mona is my host, and she's a great host. She's already offered me a cocktail. So I feel very good about that, except this one is filled with what? What am I going to be drinking, Mona? You're drinking a contrast with lemonade. A contrast with lemonade. I prefer Jack Daniels with Coke. We can spike it. <laughs> Maybe after the test, right? Okay, I have to fill out papers and be a human. Oh, is that my drink? Oh, is it on the rocks? It is. No. It's on the rocks. <laughs> I have to drink all this? You have to drink all, that. all right, here's to you, and here's to me, and the friends that we should always be. And if by chance we disagree, screw you. Here's to me. They said it's in lovely lemonade. They lie. <laughs> We're going to meet my scanner. Who are you? Sivvy. <laughs> Hi, Sivvy. What's in here? Oh, just the scanner. Well, I'm going to see. Is this going to be where my body pops up? Yeah. Your body will pop up there. Your body will lie down. I'll lie down in there. How much computer equipment does it take to make this thing work? I mean, I just see three little monitors in a box. Oh, this, this is a huge computer in here. There's a very large computer underneath the... The box. The box. Well, okay, and you sit here and look at lovely photos while my body appears right, up there. Do I need to change or anything? I just lay down in this. I get scanned in just like I am. No special wardrobe, nothing. Jeez. I was hoping like the backless gown, maybe. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna go. You can follow me in, and then you can leave when because this is the place. This is the thing. No, that, I, I think they'd prefer I not be in one. This is a scanner that allegedly is going to scan me up to 15 times faster than a traditional CT scanner. It's, it's going to scan everything from <laughs> my neck down to my pelvis. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> they'll stop there. <laughs> nothing for them to see. Nothing to see here. Uh, if you're claustrophobic, I suppose a Valium would be in order, but I'm not, so that's fine. Uh, and when you're on the other side of the glass, you'll be able to actually see my results before me, uh, which I'm not sure I like, but that's the way that it is. All right, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay down. I feel like Madonna being pulled out of something on a, on a rock stage. Don't go for second best. All right, that was rather... Go on, girl. That was rather uneventful, actually. It doesn't make that much noise. Uh, I've certainly been in noisier. Uh, yeah, it was it, not that much noise. I just sort of floated through. And, of course, when you're sitting there laying and looking up and realizing you're on a table and they're looking at your heart for a reason, it sort of freaks you out. But, but, <laughs> but you got to do it. And, by the way, what law of nature says that when you're lying on your back, holding your breath, your nose has to itch. So now what happens is uh, normally for a regular patient, uh, if they're not going to be reviewed today, they would be reviewed. And then, of course, the doctor would get with the patient to tell them what's going on. Today, we're going to talk to the doctor to see if anything is going on inside of me. Now, remember, my doctor, Dr. Mendoza, uh, referred me here. I'm not just having this just for uh, the feature or just because I'm saying that maybe you should have it. Um, I'm of the age 
this was the time for me to have it. So she's cataloging all the files over there and indexing them. If it's like all these other tests, the really cool thing is you can actually get one of these on CD so you can sit around and, I don't know, watch it with your friends and family and your kids. Eight by, eight by, <laughs> eight by ten yeah. glossies, the whole family package, absolutely. You're going to tell me what's going on inside of my, my body, and you are? I'm uh, Matt Budolf, a cardiologist here at Harbor UCLA. Now, you're not just a cardiologist. You've been really involved in this scanning technology that we just use. Yeah, yes, for, uh, since 1990, so for the last almost 20 years now I've been wow, doing there wasn't. Well, they didn't have these scanners 20 years ago, did they? Uh, they had a different version, a much earlier version, yeah. So. Now, I was referred by a doctor. I was reading out in the, in the lobby, there was an article about the scanning. And one of the things it said is they were afraid that maybe people that didn't need it through over-marketing would, would get it. And I just thought to myself, I, I don't know, it's not like I'm going to the spa sort of thing. I can't imagine someone abusing this. But um, what are the advantages of having this technology right now? And what were their concerns about abuse? I don't really see how that could yeah, happen. So I think the advantages are, uh, you know, normally when cardiology, we find disease at a very late stage. We find it when you need bypass surgery. Or you've had a symptom. Or you've a yeah. symptom or like, you know, President Clinton had bypass surgery as his first sign. That Robin Williams. Robin Williams. So finding it early, we can find it 10 years before it causes a problem and treat it. Obviously, things are more amenable to treatment early. As far as abuse goes, I think people were worried that the worried well young people would come in who really have almost a 0% chance of having disease and spending money and getting irradiated. The radiation dose is low, but there's some radiation, and getting irradiated for nothing may be the abuse. I think the abuse potential is small, but it has been in the news a lot. Well, let's talk about you stuff the young people. At what age should you start considering having something like this done? So I think, you know, for most people, it's when you enter the age of heart disease. So men, maybe 35, 40, depending on risk factors. Women closer to menopause, when the heart risk of heart disease starts going up. Isn't being an American a risk factor for heart disease now? Probably. No, I mean that seriously. We, I was telling him, you know, I was a little afraid. I said, you know, look, I know what my parents said me in the 60s and 70s. They didn't know any better, you know, and baked potato and steak every night and put some butter in there, you know. And then as you get older, fast food becomes a staple in college, whatever. And when you find reach my age and you're in your 40s you're thinking oh my god I gotta eat better but you got 40 years of crap behind you then you add in our whole new stressful life and technology and everything and it just seems like the American lifestyle is one that leads to heart disease yeah no I think you're right there have been some studies even as early back as the Vietnam War where they looked at some of the kids who died and even at age 18 or 20 they started having the early early phases of heart disease yeah, my husband so Boule Charles there I am all right so let's go through it we're gonna start with the heart uh, we'll start with the heart, and then we'll work to the rest of the body here. Um, yes, get to the most important part first. That's the heart of the matter. But you didn't do the brain. Let's just go for the heart. That's right. So here's the, the heart. And uh, what we're looking for, this, this is the spine in the back. Oh. And we're going to look for this type of bone in the heart itself. And if there's bone that's bone makes it hard, it's hardening of the arteries. It oh. becomes almost bone-like. So it's very easy to see plaques in the coronaries because they show up as these bright white streaks. And, right. and uh, so far, I don't see any. I don't have any white streaks. Yay! So, heart, heart, so your calcium score, your amount of plaque in your coronaries would be zero. So it's like golf, low score wins. And, uh, zero <laughs> What's par for the score? Par is zero, so you did well. <laughs> Um, so you did very well. And we have a, a different par for different age people. Um, um, so older people... Let me ask you about this. We talked about, uh, we talked about bad food, but uh, most people hear the words plaque in their heart and they freak out. Every human being over the age of 30 who has not been a vegan their entire life, they're going to have something in their body, right? I mean, some sort of something. Yes, no, and even some of the vegans. I mean, you think about the uh, people from India, where most of them are vegan by religion, they have more heart disease than some of the American cohorts. So I think even eating, because you can eat a lot of French fries. Oh, yeah. and be cheese. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. totally vegan, no cheese. But yes, you can fry a starch just as easily yes, as you yeah. get all the great stuff That's out of right. it. So, so vegan's not the answer completely. But yeah, I think most of us will have some something. But this looks for more advanced. Have you had one? I did, I did. When I turned 40, I had one, and so far it was negative. Oh. So I'm... I'm clear so far, so um, so so we're doing well. So uh, so the heart looks good. The size is normal. The this is the aorta. Wait, repeat that for every listener. I do not have an itty bitty teeny tiny heart. That's right. No, nope. normal size heart. There is a heart here um, that we can see. I don't know if it's beating, but I can see it. No, it's kidding. So uh, so let's go on to the body now.